Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that's caught our eye this week. I'm James, and with me is Matt. G'day. Who's been looking at a gladiator that's not Rusty Crow. No. Um, and new Cars Guide team journalist, Jake, a.k.a. Jayco, a.k.a. Outback Dove, <laughs> who's been pondering <laughs> the latest play in the Australian upper luxury market. And we'll update you on the font of all knowledge in this week's Must Watch. So stay with us. But first of all, happily again, we've had some feedback. I yes. reckon it's all good. It's all good stuff. Good deal. So... Greg Burville picked up on the conversation we had about uh, zero emissions vehicles last week. Yep. Um, our own Tom was onto that. And we mentioned that Norway is already there in terms of 50% of their new car sales are zero tailpipe emission vehicles. Mm-hmm. Greg makes the point, Norway, 385,000 odd square kilometres. Australia, 7.6 million uh, square yes. kilometres. Mm-hmm. You forgot about that small detail. So fair point, Greg. Uh, yeah. Understand that. Plus, 90% of Norway's electricity is from 24-7 hydro. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they've got that on their side. By 2030, we'll be relying on wind and solar. Good luck with that, says Greg. <laughs> so um, fair call. That's really good feedback. Thank Thanks, you. Greg. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Hammer Rocks, we were talking also about MG. And oh, yeah? w- how do people become aware of MGs? Mm. Haven't seen any communications right. on it. You don't see dealers, really. Um, and Hammer Rocks says... Where I've seen MGs being promoted in the flesh is in shopping centres. Ah, He's seen them a correct. lot. Yep. And in the last three, he saw three different shopping centre displays yep. in the second half of last year. Wow. So that's that's cool, isn't it? So Con- it's, it's going to the people. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And people are in a shopping mode. I'll yeah. have, you know, I'll get some milk and bread and an MG. An MG. <laughs> yeah, why, not? why not grab an, why not? a ZS <laughs> while you're out? <laughs> that's right. Um, Greg Wallace, he noted Hammer Rock's previous observation about dash cams. And maybe they could become part of a, a car's standard spec. Yeah, uh, we had a chat about that, and he he um, so Greg spotted the fact that Subaru offers a Garmin dash cam as a dealer fit option. Yeah, um, so maybe there that. are others out there. If, the, there yeah. are. I've, okay, I uh, my partner owns a Mini, and she got we got sent an email the other day uh, with Mini offering a Mini specific. Uh, dash cam, but okay. it's twelve hundred dollars, which is a lot more than the one you can get from Audi for seventy five. Yeah. Yeah, so right. it's yeah, the special buys, yeah. the <laughs> Audi special buys. Don't we all love that? Yeah. All right. So Vintage Eagle also said that um, they're about to buy their first car, and was grateful for the sale intel that we had. Richard oh. uh, Berry went oh, yeah. through uh, the latest sales and who's up and who's down. Most people being down. Yeah. Um, so Vintage Eagle was happy to learn that he's ready to apply the thumb screws and he's going to go in buy a car uh keep a canto gt holding astra top of the list so right. anyway two uh, two different cars two different, different cars yeah and i think the holden people would be ready to make some kind of deal oh, on an astra. probably you at a picanto know. price you yeah. never know you can anyway get them for pretty cheap <laughs> and the interestingly named saab saab um, oh. saab saab said that uh when we put the podcast up we had a slight technical difficulty which meant we uh, put the podcast on youtube up on Monday rather than Friday. He said, finally, only taking three days to upload the video. Right. Um, listen to the audio okay. podcast, but Beryl kept mentioning his mini um, and the video, so just glad the video's up. And I responded to him and said, yep, sorry about that, technical difficulty, I, but there's part of me that's quite pleased that you're annoyed. That yeah. We there. yeah. It shows Thanks. that there is Thank some you. latent demand for Love our an podcast on YouTube, <laughs> so that's great. Thank you for all of that feedback. It adds yeah, enormously to the podcast, and keep it coming. Now, Matt, we'll move straight on yes. to a vehicle and a brand that you've been exposed to just recently. Yes. As I said, it is a gladiator. Mm-hmm. It's not Rusty Crow. Not even close. Tell us about it. It's more manly than Rusty Crow. Wow. Well, um, that's some macho-ness right there. Sorry. And I love the Rabbitohs as yeah, well. He a yeah. rugby league team. Uh, I know. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it was the Jeep Gladiator. I was in uh, Sacramento in California last week to drive it. Um, Jeep had basically hired about... Uh, I would say it would have been 20 hectares of someone's property and set up a road course, an off-road course, cool. and an event space uh, on on the location. And they basically had a bunch of rain. Uh, and California isn't known for having a lot of rain. No, it's very dry. Um, yeah. So 
This was, it was uh, wet, it was muddy, it was messy, and it was a lot of fun. So it was, okay, I saw some of your um, video footage, yeah. and it was rather damp. Mm. So it, that was damper than intended. That that mud was yes. not initially going to be part of the They day. Well, I think they planned for a little bit of rain, but not quite as much as they'd had in the week leading up to the day that we were there. Mm. Okay. Uh, but it was still, I mean, um, the cars that we were driving um, on the off-road loop, section were Rubicon models, so the hardcore of the hardcore, yep. um, with a bunch of different new off-road modes and disconnectable front sway bars. And and with any luck, we'll have that footage up behind us for people oh, uh, on YouTube. Get a load uh, of it. Have a look at that. It's pretty amazing. And, um, you know, big, big mud ready tyres. They're not mud terrain tyres. They're all terrain tyres, but they still coped with the mud pretty mm -hmm. well. Down to 20 PSI because, you know, you want as, as much floor yeah. patch as you can get yes. underneath you. I loved it when you said um, we're in some serious mud. You can probably hear it. And the camera operator stuck the camera out the window. It sounded like my my old mum's mix master yeah. doing the cake mix, you know, at Christmas time. Just that this smattering kind of sound. It was fantastic. Oh, yeah. It was thick and gross. Um, yeah, right. But yeah, it was um wasn't just the off road part that impressed me about this vehicle. You know, we've we've come to expect dual cab utes to be a certain level of off roadable. Mm. And I would say that maybe the gladiator doesn't do anything beyond, but it probably does it more comfortably. Um and I mean, there are some elements of it in terms of off-road ability. It's got a stupidly long wheelbase. Yeah, it's it nearly, is. It's immense. Yeah, it's like How? three and a half metres long now, wow. this wheelbase. How long is the actual car? 5.6 nearly. Wow. So it's a big, big, big vehicle for for the mid-sized yeah. ute segment in America. And, and always a subjective call. Mm -hmm. I've got to say, I love the look of it. Yeah, look. I reckon it's amazing. I, I honestly spent probably half an hour on the day looking at different versions of it. So there was, mm. there was three versions on test, the sport base model, the mid-spec Overland and the high-spec Rubicon. Um, some were with the soft top roof, some were with the hard top roof, uh, some had different coloured roofs to the... And the hard top roof is removable. Exactly. So, so you have your soft top easier job, yep. but you can still take the hard top right off the thing. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. the, the soft top basically just folds back on itself, mm -hmm. where the hard top you can fully remove. You can fully remove the soft top too if you want to, but um, it's more of a everyday sort of option. Because taking the roof panels off and putting them aside mm. can be annoying. You can also take the doors off. You can fold down the windscreen. <laughs> it's it's typical yeah. Jeep Wrangler, but turned yeah. into a Ute. Yeah. yeah, take the body panels off. Yeah, thing. yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the thing about it, I mean, I kept looking at it going, I don't know which one I like most. The colours, depends on the colour, depends on the roof. Um, but... There's from some angles you just can't get over the fact that it's very very long yeah. and it looks a little bit ungainly in mm. some instances, but in other ways I just looked and went, oh, oh god, it looks great. How yeah. cool is that? And, yeah. uh, uh, the other thing is, it's I hadn't even got the fact initially when I saw the pictures that it's a version, of, like you know, it's an extended Wrangler. Yeah, it definitely has a personality of its own. It yeah. does mm. definitely, and and I think. Um, Jeep has gone to great lengths to make it not just a Wrangler with a tray on the back. Right. Up. They've gone to uh, their in-house towing specialists, mm. Ram, um, in order to make the chassis strong enough. Uh, mm. They've taken the rear suspension architecture from a Ram 1500, put it into this car. Ah. And so essentially okay. you've got um, a Ram but with a Jeep body yeah. and you can have up to three and a half ton towing. So it's going to be um, up there in, with the best of them in mm. terms of what it can tow. Mm. Um, payload, not so much. So less likely a tradie truck and more a kind of recreational vehicle. Exactly. And yeah. that's the what I came away from it, um, realising that there are two different ways to approach the ute segment. It's becoming increasingly clear that there's workhorse utes that have yeah. a lifestyle bent, and then there's lifestyle utes that just can do some of the workhorse yeah. stuff. And yep. so I would say that this Jeep Gladiator and even the, the Sangyong Musso are the ones that stick into that lifestyle yep. segment right now. Yes. And there's going to be more and more of them as we move forward, yep. I think. So you're going to see a boat behind it rather than a box trailer with a cement mixer in it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And I, I don't think that's um, a bad ploy for yep. Jeep to have. I think, you know, there's a lot of, um, in America, uh, there is no such thing really as a work truck, I don't think. I think a lot of people over there, mm -hmm. they buy them because they can do pretty much anything you ask of them. Yeah. And this sort of vehicle was the same. And I was surprised, like beyond belief at how good it was to drive. Right. Uh, it was 
miles better than I was expecting. Oh, that's great. So, was part of that a product of that very long wheelbase so that you got a, a pretty good ride? Yeah, and yeah. even with live axles and coil springs all around. So unlike some utes with, with the uh, leaf spring rear suspension that's designed to hold a lot of weight, it's got coil springs, which makes it a little bit better for off-roading, right. but also a little bit more comfortable uh, in most situations on the road. So Jeep has its trail rated thing right? yep. where um, that's the one that's meant for hardcore off-roading. Yeah. Is that badge applied to like the Rubicon it one, and, but not the others? And yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't ta- take full notice of the specifics around what they badged each one, but I, I know that the Rubicon is trail, trail rated. rated. Yeah. So that yeah. means um, if you did want to get a bit serious yeah. um, off road, that's your option. It's it's the go. Yeah, yeah. if you want to go full mm. hardcore, because it's yeah. got it's got extra stuff that the other ones don't have in terms. Of, I can't remember the specifics right now, but um, there's there's a lot more to it. Different gear right. ratios, different axles, and stuff like that. So cool. Yeah. Well, so, and, and what time? Uh, what kind of time frame for local arrival? This is the bad news for Australian buyers. Okay. Um, it looks like Jeep will not uh, bring the car to Australia until there's a diesel engine offered, right, okay. and the diesel engine <clears throat> isn't going to come on stream until. 2020. So right. we're looking mid next year yeah. for arrivals. And was the hint that you got that once the diesel arrives, obviously we get that engine, but that the petrol ones would come at the same time? I believe so. All right. Yeah. And then there's the talk of the, the V8, the V8. Uh, which, you know, we got a good story out of it. If you look at carsguide.com.au, you'll see that there is a, a new story about the fact that it fits like a glove, but the problem is that it fits like a glove. So yeah. Yeah. safety talking, becomes an issue. Talking about a big Hemi engine, um, there's no space around the engine for crash safety but my argument was well potentially a one star euro end cap safety rating anyway yeah um is crash yeah, safety yeah. as big a matter as it should be i think you know a, a brand like jeep needs to do everything it can, can. We'll to see. yeah yeah to meet the needs of consumers and the mm-hmm. expectations mm-hmm. of consumers. And it's not only people driving the car, it's who you crash into, it's the person on the street that you might hit. Those are the things they've got to take in yeah. mind. And right, so you're choosing your target, basically. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying aim up and, and right. fire, but yeah. uh, I think that there's there's definitely, the onus is on the brand to do everything it can to make the safest vehicle possible. All right, so we've got a bit of a wait, but yep. um, people should have a look at your story and Definitely. video mm-hmm. and uh, make their own judgment. be great to hear from some Hilux owners or Ranger yeah. owners yeah. what Definitely. they make of it. Is it a viable alternative for them or is it, you know, very much down that recreational yeah. street? Yeah. Uh, let's get your feedback. Yeah. So thank you, thank you Matt. We're going to move on now. Uh, Jake, Jayco, Outback Dove. The, <laughs> yes. the subject is your for you is Hyundai's premium brand. Fill That's us right. in. What's happening? Genesis. So... Yep. To those watching from America, Genesis uh, is definitely a more familiar name than it is in Australia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hyundai originally launched Genesis as a car or two cars uh, way back in 08. There was a coupe version and a sedan version. The coupe only lived a life. It was was an Oracle V6. You get a V6 or a two-litre turbo, I believe. Yeah. And and it was and it was a good looking car. Yeah, it looked great. Really, yeah. really good looking, and I was very sad that we never received it because yeah. I sort of do really well on the show. Anyway, wasn't, wasn't bad to drive either. Uh-huh. I got a chance. Oh, you yeah, got a chance. It was, it was pretty good. And nice. that was a can't justify right hand drive type. Yeah, I think it was. It? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So the coupe only lived one generation. Okay. Uh, but the sedan became the second generation, which was the Hyundai Genesis again, uh, and that was launched in Australia in 2016. Yes. Uh, and that car set kind of the standard for Hyundai in Australia, you know, it was pretty expensive it did, for Hyundai. It was, but it, you're right, it was an expensive Hyundai, yeah, that's but right. it was a uh, an affordable way that's into, right. a, you know, a long wheelbase right. luxury type car. Yeah, yeah, you know, compared to something like a 5 Series or an E-Class yes. or whatever, it was quite a lot less yep. to buy. Yep. Um, so uh, a year after that, they announced that Genesis was going to become a brand, mm-hmm. like uh, Infinity, like Lexus and like Honda's premium. And Jake, Acura. do you know, is that what it is in the States? Is Genesis standalone? It is, it is, it is. as I understand yeah. it. It is. So brand. initially they were going to be like, oh, we're going to have our own showrooms and that sort of stuff. But I believe I'm correct in saying, and I will check this, but they are still sold through Hyundai. Genesis. It may be an exclusive bit of the showroom I think is dedicated is. To, yep. to Genesis or That's whatever. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So around the same time, uh, Genesis announced that they were going to come to Australia as a standalone brand. Uh, the Hyundai Genesis became the Genesis G80. 
Uh, and in America, you can get a G90, so it's even bigger, but that's not for right-hand drive. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and there's also a G70, which is going to be coming to Australia as well, um, and that's going to be a three-series competitor, which I'm quite looking forward ah, to okay. driving. Okay, right. Yep. Which I've also driven, and it was pretty oh, have good. Have you now? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've driven a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've driven a three series. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Anyway, so, you know, uh, the problem is that, you know, 2016 was when they announced they were going to come, and they're still not on still sale not. in Australia. Yeah. And, and so the, 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 um, the chat is we want to do it properly. So that's there have correct. been a couple of hiccups. That's correct. They've been quite transparent about they that. They have, yep. I'm not sure what the issues are, but they want to make sure that this brand lands well yep. um, because you only get one chance that's, to make the first impression and all that correct. stuff. Yeah? yeah, they want to do it perfectly. So they, the head of the brand is Peter Evans, who used to be yeah. at Lexus Australia. He kind of yeah. handled the launch of Lexus yes. uh, back in the day. So they're focusing purely on customer satisfaction so right. if you buy a genesis uh you get a lifetime manager for your car you right. know the person that you call and go hey this is going wrong or i need this service or whatever the case may be wow um they also will have a valet service so if you need your car service they'll drop you one they'll take your car they'll service it and then so your your manager mm. would that person be based at a genesis dealership or would they be a, a kind of an, a head office person i no. I don't know. It, I'm do fairly sure. Is? I'm fairly sure that they there won't be Genesis dealerships per se. Say, right. Well, um, this is part of the delay is that they're building a standalone showroom uh, like Tesla have in the city in Sydney city. Oh, sorry. Yes. So um, a, a, a marquee kind of that's location. Correct. Yeah. Right. So that that is believed to be the biggest delay with the brand that that section is still not finished okay. yet. Okay. So, all right. So it's not clear as to where your manager is going to be based, but you're going to have someone Somebody. that you can call. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Likewise, the um, the servicing, as you said, you will make that phone call. Yep. They'll they'll give you a car to to use uh, in the period that you don't have your car. Yep. But as far as I understand it, they might not necessarily go to a Hyundai dealership to service your car. Yeah. Mm. It might be out to tender. Basically, whoever that's, is within yeah. proximity to you that can yep. service that car for yeah. you on behalf of Genesis That's Australia. Right. So I, I'd heard that they were considering like Kmart or yeah. Autotune or, you know, really? co- like companies that are at shopping centres kind of yeah. thing. You because know, you've, you've got to be careful also about your brand, you know, mm. um, that Kmart, great company as it is, yeah, it's not necessarily a premium kind correct. of brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember when Infinity um, and various others, you, you'd go to your Nissan dealer to have your Infinity serviced and there's That's a right. bit of a, a, a mismatch there as well. Exactly, and I think also the fact that um, Genesis, well, Hyundai, when they had Genesis, the the sedan, the car, yep, um, they would uh, they included servicing as part of the purchase price. So That's you don't right. you didn't pay a cent for servicing, mm-hmm. which is great. It's a really good it initiative is. to include that. I mean, you look at a brand like Volvo, for example, mm-hmm. with a competitor car, it might cost six thousand dollars for five years of servicing. Um, which is too much money. That's right. Um, and if you can get that rolled into the cost, it adds to the value, which adds to the customer experience. For sure. And I think that they've they've got they've got the right strategy in waiting until they've got everything just Every right. They thing. they wouldn't yeah. do yes. it. I think they were you know when when Hyundai launched Genesis as its own car, mm. um, it was set to be the flagship for the brand. But now yeah. they've realised no, we can't just have a flagship model or two. It's got to be a different experience altogether. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, and I mean, Hyundai in general, their ownership ratings and their ownership experience is very high very. when we look at any of the data that comes out, yeah. JD Power yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they've, they've got uh, the mentality right. Mm. Um, and I actually, you know, as much of a frustration as it is for us to yeah. have to wait to drive these cars and yeah. to tell people about them, I think they've done the right thing yeah. in making us wait so, so they get it right. Because, you know, I'm a person of a certain age and I can, we were talking about it in the office yesterday. Mm. I can remember going to the launch of Infinity, Infinity that's right, yeah. in Australia in the late 80s. Yeah. So this was the Q45. Mm. Yeah. The big thing with the Texan belt buckle, you know, badge on the front, <laughs> the, the whole bit. Nice. And the take there was pretty low key it was like thank you Lexus Mm. you've broken all the ice for us and Mm. we're just going to ride on your wake and become an established luxury brand from Japan because you've you've fought all the headwinds with your advertising and your establishing and whatever they just sank 
to the bottom. I mean, that that, that was one car, mm. and it was quite expensive. Mm. Yeah. It was not supported properly. Mm. So all of those things that Genesis seems to be doing well mm. uh, were not the case then, and there were cars that had birthdays in stock with that big yeah. infinity. Uh, they had real problems with that and sold yeah. a relative handful. So it's an important thing to get right. Not that much has changed for Infinity since oh, then either. Well, well but anyway. Yeah. Yes. Um, How about those I, swans, eh? <laughs> I, honestly, I honestly reckon that the those uh, competitor um, smaller uh, luxury brands are more at risk of being prey to brands like Mazda. For sure. Um, than any of the big established luxury players. Yeah, true. Like when you've got a brand like Mazda that is starting to go, you know what? People are willing to pay more. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's make them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We'll give them more stuff, but they're getting a premium experience right. as well. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's kind of interesting this whole state of the market in terms of um, the what the semi where? the yeah, semi yeah. premium versus yeah, the and, mainstream. And where do you draw the line? You know? Exactly. Like, well, that's it. And I suppose consumers. They don't have those lines. That's right. No. You know, as, as much as people who are quite close to it might, it's um, those brands are, are quite uh, malleable in yeah. terms of where they sit in mm -hmm. people's estimation. And it's always funny when you get someone who comes up to you and says, what do you think of the Master 3? And you say, have you already bought one? Yeah, uh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Because you want to, yeah. you know. Now, share. Jake, if it's okay with you, we'll, we'll move on. Of course. Is that cool? Fantastic. Yeah. Now, we're going to move into our garage. We are sitting in the garage, of course. Yeah. But um, with us in the garage are a few vehicles. Yeah. And Matt... You've been looking at utes again. You Look, you're the ute guy. I'm the, the ute the, king. You yeah, are a ute. I'm calling yeah. it. Yeah. Ute royalty, put it that way. <laughs> um, and the one that you, we've got a comparison test coming up, yep. but one you wanted to, to kind of select out of that and make some commentary on. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. So the Great Wall Steed. Um, yep. There's been a lot of noise around Great Wall in the last couple of weeks about this new generation model that they're bringing out. Yep. You know, it could have 900 mils of weighting depth and be a Hilux killer and all this sort of stuff. Wow. An electric version in 2021 and wow. all these great things that could potentially happen. And I think that the sooner we get to the point where we've got the replacement for the Steed, the better for everyone. Right. Um, <laughs> okay, because Steed, it's not quite there. It's not great. Okay. Um, yeah. I've spent a bit of time in it over the last week. Um, I did put 750 kilos of payload in the tray yes. plus four adults in the cab. And I have to say that it was pretty good with a load on board. Okay, Except fine. if you needed first or second gear. Really? Uh, yeah. The well, engine it became just, difficult to select first or second. The, the engine just doesn't like having weight and wow. actually being asked to work. That's okay. a major impediment. Yeah. It's not great when you're dealing issue? with a lot of traffic uh, uh, and yeah. stop-start stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I just had, like, you know, it's a diesel. It's a turbo diesel. You expect that it will have a little bit of turbo lag. Mm. But I was sitting there, like, putting my foot down, waiting for something to happen letting the revs rise, taking the clutch out, sort of going, all right, let's go. And it was just sort of like, no, uh, uh, no, nah, nah, I don't think we to, will. Really? Yeah. So what, how do you work your way out of that situation? Just rev it even harder um, yeah, and right. burn the clutch. clutch. Um, yeah, right. It, it, wasn't, it really wasn't a terrific experience with a load on board, okay. um, nor was it terrific uh, without a load on board. Um, right. This right is we're a, running out of options for a great experience here. Yeah. This is a ute that costs $23,000 drive away. Wow. But you will get it for even cheaper. That's yeah, right. cheap. Um, it's got leather. Oh, leather. leather. Um, yep. It's got heated seats. For people listening, not watching, that Matt was just quotes. went to town with the air quotes. And once you, do that, once you do that, you realize you have to start punctuating all the way through. <laughs> like, heated it's really seats. bad. Oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You should be watching the video. Um <laughs> So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's got a lot, of, a lot of stuff that people will appreciate. Like yep. it's got a really good back step bumper, so yep. you can step into the tray really easily. It's got um, a sports bar. It's got uh, yeah, does alloy it have wheels. The TVs around the sports bar. No, or? no. <laughs> no, they're showing ESPN just... <laughs> and CNN. Um, and then it's got um, four wheel disc brakes. You know, yep. which is a rarity in the dual yeah, cab sure. segment. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, it's Drum got, brakes live. Yeah. It's got a, a long wheelbase, so it actually rides reasonably well, although the, the back end is very sharply sprung, right. so it's designed to hold the weight. Yeah. It's got a good payload. Um, and I take it because I know someone who's been in the situation where they've been an apprentice and the boss has gone, I could buy one Hilux or three ah, Great Walls. Three of these, yes. So they buy three of those. 
Wow. Instead of one highlight. So that then makes me think about safety. What, what, what's what's the score in terms of active safety tech, for example? None. None. No yeah, active. Right um, two star safety rating. Yeah. Um, it does have a uh, proper middle seat rear belt. Okay. Which the Sangyong Musso surprisingly Doesn't only has have. a lap, lap only belt. belt. Wow, it's 2019. Is, it's it's despicable. Lap belt. Wow. Anyway, so not much in the safety front. The car that we have. I think it was supposed to have a rear view camera, but it doesn't. Yeah, what's to go with that? I heard about that. And yeah. What's, what? You put it in the reverse and you just get a black screen. Screens. It's like, okay. Yeah. And I had a look at the back. Like, on the tailgate, there's the recess for where the camera should goes, go. It's not there. It's not there. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I can understand if you only have $23,000 and you want a brand new U mm. and you want to be backed by some form of yeah, warranty real warranty. And all that. Yeah. Yeah, you could consider it. But... Um, I probably would steer you elsewhere. Well, the good news is we've got that comparison test coming up mm -hmm. where it will be in context. No, no, it's not in that test. Oh, isn't it? No. I beg your pardon. Take no. it back. Right. So we were going to be doing a different test with ah. more affordable utes, but it didn't happen. All so. right. Draw a line under that. Yep. But we will move on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Jake, you yes. have put your money where your mouth is. I and, did. And the car that's in our garage, your garage, yep. you tell us about that one. Okay. So uh, about... A few weeks ago, we purchased a Golf GTI original. Uh, for those watching, the original part of that is uh, Volkswagen did a special edition Golf GTI in uh, 2017. Uh, it was three doors, which is, uh, if you're watching from Europe, for example, we don't get three-door cars here, basically. Mm -hmm. Every hatchback here is five-door only. Yep. Uh, so they kind of brought it back to its basics, removed a little bit of equipment, like, you know, sat-nav and adaptive jam, stuff you don't really need. Yep. Uh, but they most importantly, they reduced the price. So yeah, when it came out, it was thirty-seven four ninety mm. uh, for the manual, right? Uh, and that ended up being about thirty-nine drive away from the dealer once you include on-road costs. Uh, and I was lucky enough to see one of the last manual ones for significantly less than that. And um, he pounced. So that's I a brand, that's a brand new car. Brand new but car, but its compliance plate was still what a 2017? 2018. 2018. Yeah. yeah. So Volkswagen Australia originally said, "Look, we're only going to do about two hundred and fifty of these because we don't think too many people want them." Mm. The first batch sold out pretty quickly. Mm. Uh, so they did another batch, which was built. Uh, mine was May eighteen. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're now sitting on a car that's going to be quite rare Very in rare. times to come. That's right. The onus is on you. The responsibility is on you to <laughs> take, to look after it, yep. take care of it. Of course. No for pressure. future owners. That's fantastic. And <laughs> yeah. how have you been enjoying it? It's been great. Uh, yeah. We've done about 2,000 kilometres so far. Yep. Um, we drove up to the mid-north coast of New South Wales yep. a couple of weeks ago. And I had a 2017 Golf before that. Ah. Um, which, of course, people are going to be going, why did you trade in so early? But, but was, um, that, was that one a GTI? It was or? a comfort line. Comfort line. So, so just, there's going to be a, there's a, a big difference, difference there. Yeah. Big mm. difference. And that's pretty much why I did it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, on the highway, it did 6.2 litres per 100 Ks. Wow, that's good. Uh, and, you that's know, great. it rides like a little touch firmer than mm -hmm. the old one did because the inch bigger wheels. But mm -hmm. otherwise, it's And fantastic. do you pick up the, the 7.5 multimedia, like the better screen? Exactly and all the same. The, yeah, yep. Wow, that makes a big difference. Great car. Yeah. I um, I went to the launch of the GTI original As years ago. As did I. Yes, yes. At your former employer. Yes. Um, but I absolutely fell head over heels with it. Yeah. I thought it was the essence of what the Golf GTI sure. should be. Yep. And, you know, we've come to a point with Golf GTI where it's getting so close to a Golf R that there's, you know... Yeah, right. Really? No headroom. Yeah. yeah. And even no in price, go. you know, it's nearly 45 grand for the What's new it? one or whatever it is. Yep. Yeah. Um, my, uh, next generation will probably be even more. Even more, yeah. So Yeah, that's the thing. And the thing is also in Australia, the Golf R is detuned because of our hot weather. Mm. Yeah. So you're only looking at about what is it, 180 kilowatts versus 213, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. Well, look, well done. Pretty close. Well done, Outback yeah. Dove. That Thank is a, a massive purchase. That's yeah. a coup. Good on you. <laughs> now, you. I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the car oh, yeah. that I've driven this week, and it's the Yaris Ascent oh, yeah? hatch. Okay. So it's a 1.3 litre. Is that uh, the base model or? Uh, it's yeah. I think it's it is. 1.3, yeah. 1.3, four-speed auto. Yep. Uh, it's about... Seventeen thousand dollars before you pay your on road, yeah. so it's it's an economy type choice. It's possibly a first new car For sure. type thing, yeah. or last new car. Yeah. You know, I, these yeah, these models tend to split between very young buyers yep. and the older age yep. uh, in the spectrum. 
It's about 63 kilowatts, 121 newton metres, so it's a powerhouse. Oh. It's an absolute <laughs> wow thrill uh, to drive. <laughs> it's not. It, it, it really lacks in terms of the ability. You see it as a city car. Oh, it's so zippy. What? Mm. It's not zippy. It doesn't have, <laughs> it doesn't have the zippy. That's, right? that's, that's, the, that's the word to describe oh, no. city cars. It's yeah. not. You ask someone how it is and they go, it's really zippy. zippy. Yeah. Like, no, this isn't zippy. Yeah. What does that mean? No zip here. <laughs> here, we don't have zip. <laughs> Um, but the nice thing is that our eldest daughter has a 2008 Yaris. Oh, okay. And so there's a, a decade yeah. Comparo going on. Yeah. And i got to say, I know this is very cheeky, but I prefer her car. Yeah. Um, and that's because mainly of the interior layout. Mm-hmm. Hers is not zippy either. I think she thinks it is. I, I would disagree. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Politely. The, the interior layout in her car is yeah. just so chock full of storage yeah. options. Yeah. Cup holders, glove boxes, little hidey holes sure. for knickknacks and what have you. Yep. You could stock. It's like a kitchen pantry. There mm. are places to just put things everywhere. Yep. Really great. Yep. This one is a little more conventional in terms of the cabin and storage options and what have you. It's a nice looking little car and I'm, I sound like I'm having a red hot go at it. But ironically, the 10 year old one, I think has a lot going for it. For sure. So the, the, um, the current generation one, which has been around for nine years, yeah, um, is product of GFC, and that's when yeah, this is, we were talking about this the other day. Yeah, yeah. Toyota decided, well, we're going to cut back on everything that costs too much. Yes. So stuff that all the good stuff that went between generations was pulled out of that yeah. that Yaris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even um, yeah, like you say, the storage. I think there's a center console is yes. different. Yeah, it is. Um, and yeah. it was it's. I mean, it's nine years old, nearly. That mm. car. It's it's an old platform for a well, city car. Nine years old plus the old one. Yeah, you know, how, yeah. How well, going back nineteen back. years to yeah. her car. Yeah, it's got that little pod in the center of the yeah, dash top yeah. with the, the digi speedo yeah. and yeah. all that kind of stuff. I love that. Yeah, yeah. and it gives it a much area feel sure. because you don't have that dashboard coming towards you. Mm-hmm. It sort of scoops away from you. I yeah. love it. Um, so anyway, there you go. I'm not being perverse. I'm just calling it the way I see it. We're yeah. going to see how it stacks up against some of its competitors in the next week yeah, or that's so. That's right. Um, and stay tuned for the comparison test with that mm-hmm. one and some of the other big name little cars Good. you can find. Now, speaking of staying tuned, make sure you oh. stay tuned for Muskwatch. Okay, so... Big news. We're going to the polls on May 18. Happy days. Mm. Terrific. We all love federal Elon's running for PM. That would be an interesting candidate. (laughs) But um, Aussie tech billionaire Mike Cannon-Brooks has invited Elon to weigh in to the debate about the Labor Party's target of 50% of vehicles sold being EVs, new vehicles sold, Mm -hmm. uh, being EVs by 2030. So 11 years into the future. Mm -hmm. And we touched on this whole thing last week. Mm -hmm. Tom Tom was onto it. ScoMo and co have been poo-pooing the idea, um, at least initially they were, mm-hmm. but Elon's confident we could do it in far fewer than 11 years. So uh, Mike Cannon-Brooks put it out there to him. He responded. Um, on the Twitters, he says, Norway's proven it can be done, so no worries. I mean, cop that, Greg Burville, um, <laughs> with your, you know, your Norway <laughs> yeah. put-downs, but yeah. uh, Elon's confident we can do it. So if the only way that could possibly happen would be if Elon set up manufacturing of Model 3, Model S, Model X in Australia right. yeah. and the costs were actually reasonable. Well, marquee hire here is super cheap. I'm sure it's less <laughs> than California. So you could set up a factory within minutes. There's plenty of land to build big tents. Big tents, yeah. absolutely. Look, the other thing that's been interesting this week, I came across a story that was authored by... Russ Mitchell from the Los Angeles Times, but it was actually run by the Sydney Morning Herald this week. And it focused on a group called Tesla Q. It's dollar symbol, cap T, lowercase L, lowercase L, uh, S, blah, 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 Tesla Q. And that's Tesla's stock symbol, followed by a Q, which is a stock exchange notation for a company in bankruptcy. So you can see where we're going with this. This is a group of um, short sellers using a website called tslaq.org to aggregate reporting on inventory and storage sites around the country, uh, most of which appear to be holding yards for normal stock all over the US, like 10 to 500 cars. Yeah. But they've all got all that kind of noted down on the website. Um, it's kept a list of Tesla executive departures from early 2016 to date, it's a long including list. the yeah. name and position and time and wow. all of that stuff. Um, there's also the Shorty Ground Force using smartphones to photograph yeah. you know, holding yards. And the Shorty Air Force, 
which is using drones and even light planes to photograph these wow. locations and try and get a picture of, of what's going on. It's a serious operation. It is very, a serious. And in the story, dedicated. you know, the, the author of the story, Russ Mitchell, said they were looking down at 100 car carrier trailers lined up in neat rows, empty, idle, not taking cars anywhere, 100 wow. car carriers. And three to 4,000 cars in Lathrop in California wow. just aggregated there. Now, it's a pretty big brand and a pretty big company. Mm. Mm-hmm. To me, this is all meant to, you know, undermine mm. the brand because mm. they're in a short position yep. and they want it to fail. Yeah. It just seems like a really nasty kind yeah. of coordinated attack yeah. Yeah. on the brand. And one of the comments on the online story I found really interesting, a commenter was Mr. Chris. Uh, and he says, I've just returned to Oz after a three-year stint in Cali managing new product introduction teams at Tesla. Right. Right. And he says, manufacturers need to produce at scale for cost recovery and figure the downstream part of the business. Um, large, particularly fast-growing organizations orchestrate this perfectly. Does Musk oversell the um, company? Sure. Are the naysayers right? No. But they may make a buck in the short term just like punters make dollars betting on the other side. Mm. So I thought that was really interesting. An yeah. insider coming up with, he thinks things are going to go in the right direction. Right. Yeah. That the naysayers, no, nah, they're not right. Okay. Well, I mean, electric vehicles right now are the talking point. Uh, not just. just not just here, but globally. You yeah. know, it is it is that, I think we're at that point where it's starting yeah. to go, okay, this is going to happen. Well, and it's going to happen without... Whether we like it or not. Well, Michaela Cash was out there saying that oh. she was worried that tr- young tradies were going to have their utes taken away from them. They were going to be we've banned. Got to, we've got to save our utes. Hilux ban. Labor wants to take your utes from you. I think that's overstating the case uh, myself. But um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's extraordinary. Yeah. Now, the Bloomberg <laughs> Model 3 production tracker, 5613, that's up close to 300 on last week. That's share not price. Bad. Share price steady around two seventy six. That's up about ten dollars on last week. Right. So given that that whole SEC finding uh, happened last week, that's quite a an amazing result. Really, mm-hmm. stayed steady. So they've got another week to come back. The SEC and Elon Musk and Tesla to have worked out some kind of uh, arrangement on how he's going to conduct himself in the media, mainly social media. Yep. Do you think it's staying steady just in case the SEC goes? All right, no, we can't have you there anymore. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, Who knows? I, I, I mean, if I'm looking at the brand, I'm looking at him as a real liability yeah. for the success of that brand but because of is, these issues. What's Tesla without him? Yeah, you know, yeah, that's so true. much of the charisma and personality of Tesla is wrapped up in him. Well, it goes from a tech brand to being a car brand. A car brand. And well, and you're right. I get what you're saying exactly. Put a, a person who's more used to producing vehicles mm. in there and a lot of the problems that they've been experiencing evaporate yeah but sure. take him out of the picture and a lot of the allure of the car yeah. evaporates it's, right. so it's it's a bit of a bind oh yeah it's a yeah. catch 22 yeah classic definitely all right anyway with that we've reached the finish line thank you matt thank you and thank you jake thank you and thanks to our producer mr pritchard for his tireless efforts you can join the conversation by searching for cars guide on facebook and instagram using the hashtag cg podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. Keep them coming. Yep. You can like listen them. to and watch us on YouTube, so jump into the comments with our regulars and be heard. Um, if you're enjoying Tools in the Shed, please let other people know, and please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps other people find the podcast. Until next week, I have two things to say. Sex in your car can be wild and exciting, <laughs> and the mechanics at the workshop where I take my car for service need to broaden their minds. <laughs> Sex in whose car? <laughs> Any car, mate. <laughs> It'll do. <laughs>